Hey guys, my name is Sniff, and today I'm actually going to be doing a cooking video, surprisingly. So we're doing pumpkin and feta ravioli. Um, it's a pretty good dish, tasted incredible. So first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and lay out all the ingredients so you can check them out, and we'll get this one sped up for you. Now, this being my first video of this kind, I've kind of messed up a few things. Uh, primarily, I haven't got all the ingredients actually out. So what's off camera is uh, just a bit of wine, a bit of red wine. I tend to go for red wine that I enjoy drinking. Otherwise, I don't really want to have a whole bottle of it lying around just to hopefully cook with. And also just some herbs from the garden. But apart from that, it's a pretty basic setup. So you've just got yourself some, you've got feta, pumpkin, celery, mince, bacon. You've got some tomato sauce, onion, carrot, garlic, uh, tin tomatoes. Um, eggs and type 00 pasta flour. So let's get into cooking it. And what we have here is we are getting, I think it's about 300 grams of flour. Now generally I like to do for pasta a 100 grams of flour to one large-ish egg. These are small eggs, so I end up having to go back and use four, which made it just a bit too wet. And then we had to go back and put a little bit of flour in. But that's the thing with making certain doughs. Pasta flour, pasta dough is one of the uh, easier ones to make. Once you get an idea for how the consistency and how it's meant to feel, you can really just kind of freehand things. Um, start off from a place of knowledge. So in this case, 300 grams, three eggs, that's, that's good for three people. That's 100 grams per person. And then you kind of just add more as you need it of whichever one being too wet or being too dry. As you can see at the moment, uh, it is looking like a hopeless mess, but just trust me, um, the flour just needs a bit of time to hydrate from the liquid that's in it, and it will start coming together to form a bit of a dough ball. So as I said, it was a bit, these eggs were a bit too small than the usual larger eggs we got. They are homegrown eggs, I think. Um, and then as you can see with that last egg, it's just a bit too sticky. So we throw a little bit more flour on it, which kind of makes it perfect. Try and scrape the bench a bit, bring some of the excess stuff up group it all together we'll have a little bit of flour left over at the end we'll chuck that out but we'll also have a nice dough ball towards the end and then that simply just gets wrapped up in some cling wrap you want to make that really really tight and then from that point forward you just store it and you want to get this job this part done before you go ahead and start doing any of the other things because you want that pasta to rest let that gluten rest let it become a bit softer and more pliable so when you actually go to make the pasta it's going to be easy to manage otherwise it's going to be a bit of a nightmare it's going to fight you back and be very springy and take reform to its own shape that it was before you tried to mold it if that makes sense Yeah, many apologies about this shot. I thought I had set it up better like I had the first couple of shots, but unfortunately, as I said, new to this, so I didn't. But it's something I'll work on if I do this again in the future. Basically what I'm doing though is I've just kind of made like a Christmas bonbon, and then I've twisted both ends until it's a very taut little ball, curled it up on itself, and then just put it somewhere dry out of the way, 
just to store itself. Let it sit, let the gluten relax. So as I said, you can mold it. Give the workstation a bit of clean down and let's move on to the prep of the veggies and everything else. Don't be a little dirty bugger, wash your celery sticks, there's dirt in them, always. Wash them, same as leek, wash it. So I've pretty much processed everything up at this point. Um, <clears throat> it's got the pumpkin left now. Just here I'm noting there's two types of spoons. You've got your soup spoon or you've got your kind of dessert spoon type thing. Nice thin dessert spoon makes it easy. You can't see it in the frame because again, bad framing from my part. But you grip it by the tip, stick it in the flesh, spin it around and you get a pretty easy cut into a solid piece. Um, I like to use a big um, Chinese knife, Chinese cleaver to process kind of more hectic things. Just makes it a breeze. It's just a powerful powerhouse in the kitchen, I guess. We've got all our mise en place to the right there with the carrots, um, onion and celery. We've got our meats to the left. We've kept most of them separate the whole time. And then let's get on to cooking it. All right, so we've got our olive oil heating up in a high walled pan. You're gonna want it a high wall because it's gonna splash everywhere when you're cooking this. And we're gonna have it simmering for a bit afterwards. That's a double concentrate tomato paste. It's really nice. Um, gives a nice tomato we hit. We cook our bacon so we can get a bit of that to stick to the bottom. When we throw our veggies in, they're gonna sweat out a bit and they're gonna remove some of that stuckness in the bottom. They're gonna leak their oil. I oh, not their oil, sorry, their water. Um, after we've sweat those out a bit, I'm gonna throw in the garlic, which I've prepped, and I'll just cut to me actually prepping that when, I do, when it comes around. And also then the meat's gonna go in. We're gonna cook the meat so the water comes out of it. Then we're gonna get rid of all the water in it. We want it to completely cook down. Now I'm using a whisk here to bash the meat up and split it up before I start cooking it. Makes it just go quicker, splits it up quicker. Here comes the garlic. Now the garlic here, just taking the tops off, peeling them, just give them a smack, they should come straight out of the skin sometimes. You know, it's garlic, it's not always great, it's pretty shit sometimes. I just bash it up with a knife as quick as I can. Then I smear it across the board really firmly. That's why I love the cleaver. Such a huge work for horse. So we're just straining off the pumpkin, letting it cool down there. And this is actually a quick cut. So what I've done is I've boiled out all the liquid from it. And right now, if I turn the audio up on the actual clip, you hear it is sizzling as if it's frying, which is exactly what we want. So with that sizzle, browns a bit of it off and that is all flavor. Just be careful not to burn it because at this stage we should still have it running on a pretty high heat. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and grab the wine and deglaze in a second. Just what I'm showing you here is the herbs that we used. So that was just some from my garden. We've got a little bit of rosemary, just a tiny bit. We've got a bit of oregano and a little bit of fresh basil. You really don't need much. And bay leaves, but who knows what the hell they do. Deglazing it now, getting all that yummy stuff off off the bottom of the pan. A bit more red, because why not? Throw in a uh, chicken stock cube, or Americans call it a bouillon. Throw in the 
the tomato paste here. Now you want to throw that in kind of just after the wine simmered down because you want that to actually start to caramelize, give it a bit of a sweetness. Now the herbs go in, gives them a chance to go in direct compact, contact with the, uh, with the pan, make them a bit aromatic. I've squished the tomatoes in my hands, made a massive mess. It was great, just cleaned it up real quick. Throw in a bit of, uh, bit of a tin's worth of water, pretty much. So tin of tomato, tin of water with that stock cube, that acts as your chicken stock, bit of salt and pepper, pretty easy. Bit of demerara sugar, just like the flavor it gives. Not much, it's just enough to counteract the acidity of the tomato. And then we pretty much just let that simmer, bring it right down. Oh, sorry, add a bit of butter, add a bit of milk. Again, with the milk, that's, that's what I reckon taught. It's a good idea, it gives a bit, don't know what it does, but it's really nice. And we just let that simmer. Let's move on to actually making the ravioli. All right, so the filling is pretty simple. It's just pumpkin, a bit of feta. There's no measurements, we're just kind of eyeballing it. Pumpkin, bit of feta, bit of um, grana panado, gives it a nice uh, saltiness. The pumpkin is actually quite sweet once it's boiled, especially because I use butternut. That feta just gives it a nice creaminess. The pumpkin's cooled down a bit, so it's easy to handle, but it's, the feta's still gonna melt into it a bit. And, and now we're retrieving our uh, dough ball here. It's um, nice and sticky. I guess you can call that nice. Some people hate it. Anyway, adding a bit of flour because it's a bit sticky to handle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that into eights and then I'm going to individually press down those eights. I'm gonna work them from the thickest end to the smallest and try and keep them in a bit of a rectangle because when you're passing it through the roller, I'm starting on uh, uh, six or five and working down to level three by the way. Uh, but when you're passing it through the roller, it does have a tendency to want to spread out widthways, so we're trying to kind of give it a bit of attention, attention either way to make sure that it passes through and goes lengthways rather than widthways. Trying to get even pieces, but it's pretty, pretty dang hard, I tell you. So we're just trying to aim as, as, as best as we can. There's going to be a bit of wastage on this one, but that's all right. Eggs and flour are pretty cheap. Now you see on the right there, I got a bit of a torn one. I'll come back to that and try and stitch that back together. But yeah, it does happen. I've not had that much experience playing with pasta, so I'm not that great at it. I just, uh, from what I know, there's probably people out there that would look at this and go, holy crap, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. But you know what? I'm a home cook and it tasted fantastic. So what can I say? Pretty simple here, just trying to get the ones that kind of match similar sizes, trying to line them up simply. Getting some of the filling, placing it out where I know there's some edging there, having a look at it, yep, fits nicely. Then I'm gonna get some of that water. I actually started incorrectly here, banging it down, realizing it's not gonna stick, because I forgot the water. Put the water down in between, just cross hatch it all. That water's gonna act a bit like a glue. Now I'm just using the tiniest bit on that brush, because that brush holds a lot. And I'll go around, press down on all of them, come back with the back of that um, ravioli cutter and just press it all down. The first one's always shocking while you find your flow, and then once you get to the next ones, they're much better. But only film the first one. There's no point in filming what you've already seen. I'm just showing you the consistency of the sauce that we're going for there. Get the pasta or the ravioli or the tortellini. I don't know what they're called. Throw them in. 
give them a little boil. Basically, once they start, they go lighter in color and they'll start floating. They'll also become more rigid because the egg inside of the pasta, inside the flour is gonna cook. Now, my girlfriend came into the kitchen at this point, so I'm gonna ask her to eat this meal and then I'll get her to give an honest reaction on camera. Tell you what, it was bloody awesome. Um, I'm gonna write up a bit of a recipe kind of thing into the description down below. Check it out if you wanna make this yourself. It's pretty dang easy. It's a little bit time consuming, but 100% worth it. As you can see, I completely smashed it. Just stood there and ate the whole thing because it was just divine. And apart from that, thanks for staying through to the end. If you are like this, chuck us a like, let us know what you thought, and I might make more. I also wanna stream some cooking stuff so I can answer questions live. Thanks for your time, guys. Bye.